it's quite unusual to have a lawyer here as a part of the show because lawyers are typically considered to be extremely boring. So when you have an exciting conference, the least thing you want to have is a lawyer talking. Um, sorry for that, but it was not my idea to be invited here. It was Lionel and Sebastian's. We, I have to take, how to move forward? Okay, the talk is pretty straightforward. We will have um, something about 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes for a presentation, and then I'm extremely happy to take all your questions and to make it a bit more both ways. Not only being here flooded with information you're probably not so interested in. It's your chance to get all the, your information you want, so ask all the questions you decide. One of the things which are really nice in Europe is that we do have the European Union and we do have a broad framework on data protection within the European Union. This is a new unique piece. When I started lawyering in the medical sector in 1999, we were, had a lot of trouble with medical devices. At that time, the blood scandal in France was just a few years old. You had new regulators in place and it was extremely difficult to sell medical products across Europe. And now we have an entire harmonized framework on data and how to handle privacy with data within the European Union, and that is the platform on which you are all working on. So if the European Union wouldn't be there, it would have to be invented right away. That's something we could really be proud of. Apart from that, I would like to draw your attention to two um, very important pieces of documents. The first one is the data directive you already know. The second one is the opinion of the working group on data privacy on apps and smart devices. That's probably the most important guidance for any app developer. Whenever you need to read a document, you have to read this. Forget all the other ones, take this. In Germany, we have a landscape which is federal, of course, which deviates heavily from the structure you have in France. So you have 16 plus one players, data privacy ways. And that makes it extremely complicated. You have 16 state laws on data privacy, you have a federal law on data privacy, plus a plethora of sector-specific regulations in the social insurance, in the telecommunication sector, and beyond. It is informally coordinated by the permanent conference of data protection authorities, the so-called Düsseldorf Circle. It's not a business club, it's, they are really working on that. So they try to move on and to take on new questions and new ideas and to get some guidance on how to handle it. The typical way law evolves in, in the European uh, landscape is that you go to court but we have rarely, rarely ever cases throughout Europe on data privacy because nobody really wants to challenge in a public proceeding or to be challenged in a public proceeding privacy-wise. Whenever a hospital gets into the sensible area when they get a motion or a decision of a regulator to stop or to discontinue any practice with regard to patient data, they wouldn't even dare to go to court they stop it right away or try to get a settlement with the regulator out of court. Therefore, we don't have a case law in data privacy. We don't have a case law volume and therefore we don't have a typical evolutionary process to adjust the regulations to the practical needs of business. And this adaption of the law to the practical needs of business takes place typically by means of these guidance documents. That's pretty unique in the, in the uh, data protection uh, setting. The 16 plus one has one severe detriment compared to the situation here in France. Whenever you are really willing to enter the healthcare market in Germany, you have to deal with all of them. So whenever you are approaching a hospital in Frankfurt to take your stuff, your applications for mobile patient data care within the hospital, and uh, this specific hospital has a branch, a subsidiary in Bavaria, 
they are under a total different regulatory oversight and they could manage to get you a different guidance. It's close to a nightmare, but that's here the thing we have. I have to apologize for that, very German and very complicated, but uh, it's inevitably so and we have to deal with it. In practical terms, if you want to have it, to have a safe playground, a level playing field, one of the things is to informally check with your regulator how they consider your apps. And in the healthcare market specifically, we do have, in the meantime, one center in Northern Westphalia. They are happy to take your application and review that and certify it for compliance with applicable laws. So a one-stop stop. It's not a, it's not a, it's not on a federal level uh, regulated, but it's the first entity and the first authority where you really can get a clear guidance. It has a long history of expertise. The Center of Tele, uh, of, tele of Telemedicine here in Northern Westphalia, and that's the empirical data they are resting their advices on. So if you want to go to Germany, best advice would be go to them if you have any practical questions. I'm going to elaborate a little bit more in detail the, the guidelines for app developers. It's a sort of a, a sibling or a twin to the document on the European level. I've mentioned before in my introductory remarks that the working group opinion on apps and smart devices. We have something similar within Germany as a document of the Düsseldorf Circle, so the permanent conference of the data protection authorities. And that's the thing we have. If you don't want to deal with local law in Germany, the best advice would be keep and remain your, under your undertaking your enterprise in France or go to Ireland. Don't enter here the German borders. Otherwise, you are under our regulations. One of the not so nice things for app developers, but one of the things which is throughout Europe here, the, the standard, is that we consider personal data no longer only the really actual personal data adhering or relating to a natural person, but a lot of technical stuff around. Specifically, IP addresses, the, this unique device and customer identifiers, the emails and things like. So whenever you have a gadget in your hand, the typical information to identify the gadget and the person behind the gadget are considered personal data. And if you are willing to enter into the processing or the collecting of such data, you are the data controller. And that's the most important thing to bear in mind. Even your startup enterprise, your startup undertaking with a workforce of two will be the data controller if you collect the data and if you process the data. And that's an important piece because you are then under the responsibility to comply with all the data protection rules in place. And if you don't do that, you are with both foot, you are in the field of penal law and penal responsibility. Don't do that. So if you would go beyond your application and really benefit from having them in the field, from collecting data, from um, submitting data to third parties, you are the data controller and therefore you have to comply with these rules. A pretty important piece. One of the specifics of, of any mobile technology in the, in the app world is you have not only one controller for the data, you typically have a layer of two or three or four. Beyond the application, you also have the device manufacturer or the OS manufacturer. He is also collecting, handling, processing data coming from the user. And also the app store who is selling that or distributing that collects data around the application. The login data, here the entire payment history and also the payment data to be inserted. Last but not least, all the third parties you would have to have on board with for your application. So the medical devices manufacturer, the healthcare professionals and whoever is willing 
to jump ship and to, to benefit from your application and your platform. So the one thing you have to bear in mind is when you enter the application field, you are not alone, you act in concert in a group of at least three or four. And you have to coordinate with all of these how the data controlling is managed. In practice, you need to have some sort of a matrix, a roles, accountability, and information uh, matrix, the typical Rocky matrix. Responsibility, accountability, control, information. Who is doing what? You have to coordinate that. So take this please on in your checklist when you're starting your application development before launching it in your app store. Hmm. Prior informed consent, that's the centerpiece, the critical, the king's rule within the European data privacy field, prior informed consent. You have to, you have to collect and you to gather these consents these declarations prior to the installation and prior to the processing of the data. And the minimum requirements are listed above. I don't read it aloud for you, you can read on your own terms. And I'm, of course, be happy here to provide all these informations afterwards. Plus all the informations you would come up with the next day is just send me an email. The only thing I can't provide for you for sure is I don't have all these documents in English translations or French translations. So the next thing to be would either to take, a, take German classes to uh, read and understand either German regulatory documents or ask somebody fluent in these languages. Or ask me. One of the things you should be, be aware of um, when you're entering the development consent, which is here the king's rule, is always limited. You don't have an unlimited, permanent, eternal consent to anything. Consent is always specific. Specific to a specific question, task, purpose, environment. And it's limited in time. Any consent given will expire from time to time. So whenever you try to establish your business model, please watch out that any consent given will expire at least after 12 months. It has to be renewed. Take that on in your business model. Consequences. One of the consequences out of this pretty complicated framework, a multi-dimensional framework of many actors on mobile devices is, we have to go the path further down the road to enter into the camp of privacy by design. So whenever you lay up your business models, try to implement right from scratch your application that all these privacy concerns are met right from the beginning. It's extremely complicated to implement that in hindsight, afterwards, when you have all things ready, ready for launch. I think we are good in time, aren't we? Perfect? Still perfect. Cool. So. One of the nice things in, in mobile developments today is all, you don't need to have storage capacities or processing capacities on device or on your application side. You, have, you can use anything flying around which is called cloud storage and, and cloud processing power. The only thing you have to consider is, as you are considered to be a data controller when you are accessing, collecting, and um, processing user data, you have to comply with the laws for how a data controller has to steer to control the data processor. So you need a piece of paper that makes the data processor, the data center, your slave, that you are able to manage, to control, to, to monitor them. Otherwise, it would be illegal. And illegality is the least thing you need to get kicked out of business right from your competitor because all these mandatory requirements for privacy are typically considered unfair behavior in competition-wise. So throughout Europe, your competitor can go to court and kick you out of business whenever you are not complying with these rules. And that's an, an imminent danger here.
You don't have it in the US, but you do have it in Europe. Thanks a lot for your, for your hints. Um, telemedia, I just skip that because it's not, it's just a marginal point I wanted to make. One of the things, very important things you have to be, to, to be aware of in Germany is we had, we had a case a couple of years ago, I think five to six years ago, with one of the anchor women, a very prominent, very attractive young woman who was, um, I think she, she managed to, to give talks in, in, in the sports area. She had wonderful um, TV shows with sports and football and things alike. And she managed to get extremely sick. She was brought into the university hospital in Hamburg and had, um, I think, some sort of a bleeding in her brains, an extremely complicated emergency operation, surgery that had to take place, and it didn't went good. She was severely damaged afterwards. And the next day, the local newspapers were able to give accurate details about the correct diagnosis and all the catastrophes that happened to happen in the, in, in the, in the, in the, in the surgery rooms. How could that happen? The response was that the national broadcaster kicked the mayor of Hamburg, and the mayor of Hamburg kicked the data authorities, the, the regulator in Hamburg, to look after here data controls and data privacy modes in the university hospital in Hamburg. And they found that it was a scandal how controls and access uh, modalities were handled there. And in the aftermath, the guidelines on hospital information systems what came, came into existence as one of the coordinated pieces by the, by the Düsseldorf Circle. And that is an extreme tight piece regulating and prescribing all the requirements you need if you want to go into the hospitals. So whenever you try to adjust your applications for core medical needs, for core medical requirements, as a mobile device replacement in hospitals, you have also to be in compliance with these rules. And they are pretty tight in documentation, in securing, monitoring, control, transfer, data flows, and things like, plus encryption on all devices to the extent possible. So that was a quick scam, a quick overview on the data privacy scene, medical-wise, healthcare-wise in Germany. And I'm extremely happy to take all your questions in whatever language you want. Thank you so much. Go ahead. Sounds like a uh, legal minefield. Uh, is there any good news? Can you repeat the question? Okay. So the question was. It looks and sounds like a real minefield. Any good news for that? I think the, the critical point is that the application, app development, comes out of the gaming area. Have fun with it. And medical stuff comes out of the, out of the corner of medical devices, a very strict and compliant to tight rules um, industry sector. And they are meeting here. It's a collision of worlds, frankly. And the answer would be that you have, you have, to, you have to ease a, a few of the, of the restrictions we have on the medical devices field. So software and the medical device sector is really a nightmare. Because medical devices in, in sheer numbers are limited. You don't have eternal or infinite numbers of, of MRTs, of, of these heavy devices which are installed in hospitals. But you have, of course, 800 and something thousand apps on the, on the Google App Store, even, if not more. Nobody can regulate 800 plus thousand applications. Nobody can check it. There's no laboratory. You can bring that in. And we have here the same question all over the world, from the FTC until, and the FDA until, until the, the European regulators. They can't comply with these flood of applications coming. So the idea would be that we are opening a field of things where you do something like a self-regulation or self-assessment, rule-based, and then it's okay. 
and the rest for the really strict, tight things, which are close to these core medical devices. So these class three equivalents on the, on the medical devices front, they have to be mandatorily under close super, uh, supervision of the regulator, and they will remain there for natural reasons, because neither you nor me want to be under medical treatment of applications which could be so-so if it goes to life and danger. Okay, next question. Okay. No, 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 no. You're right. In the in in the private sector, in the private sector, paper-based documentation, paper-based patient data were never under privacy controls. Privacy in the private sector is only digital data-wise and enabled or applies to these to these sectors. And you will rightfully draw the attention to the fact when you. When you blend, when you link techniques which were considered in the past independent techniques, nobody would have wanted to regulate email communication systems. It would be totally insane to do that. However, if you, if you attach an email um, yeah, submitting or sending facility or server structure to an X-ray system, which automatically transfers then all the images taken, then you are entering into the medical devices camp. That's for sure. And, and uh, that's one of the really difficult, difficult questions at the moment. It, 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 they, it, is, it is undertaken to address these risks by one of these, um, one of these new industry norms, 80,001. So there is a technical solution to risk management. You, you look upon these things from a risk management perspective. Data protection-wise, it's totally a new field. We have to, to elaborate on solutions and ways to go forward from step to step and from case to case. Not to be, not to be misunderstood, we are here on a front line. Yeah, this is here the Western Front. We are entering into new territories. And nobody can really give you a clear guidance what will be in the next five years because nobody could have foreseen five years before where we are now. Neither can the regulator, neither can the parliament, nor can any of the regulating authorities to do that. It's not a bad thing. I mean, it's, it's more or less an open sky. A bit wild at times, but still open. Okay, the last question, probably. Okay. I think one of the. So, sorry. Okay, sorry. Um, your question was um, I've already indicated that there are at least attempts made to establish new laws dealing with these, these situations. Are there movements or developments such the other way around, so bottom up instead of top down? Um, Yep. 
One of the things I, I've mentioned typically are these guideline documents type of things. You will find that with the FDA, you find it with the Dutch regulator. I've seen similar documents from Swedish regulators and also here from, from the German and, and, and the core European ones. I think that's probably one of the most eminent ways to, to, to address this. There's so much uncertainty around and uh, the best thing to do is to sit together and try to, to, to find solutions case by case. And another nice thing about these guidelines is you can drop that immediately if you feel uncomfortable with it. If they prove to be ineffective or misleading, you simply trash them. If it would be a law, it would be much more difficult to get it modified and further evolved. I think I overlooked somebody here and you wrote it before. Okay, the very, very, very last question. Um, we, we, we do have one on, on the federal level. The, the, the a unified thing. Maybe when my kids are in the age of 95, and they are now, my, my middle son is now nine years old, so until 95, there's quite a long way to go. Thank you so much for your question.